Right now, tonight at 5, take a look just moments ago, Misty Knoll, the wife of the former Clark County, Indiana Sheriff Jamie Knoll, walking down the courthouse hallway here in southern Indiana, now into custody. Misty Knoll is officially being booked into the Scott County Detention Center. She is facing several charges. The couple spent all day waiting inside at the Clark County Courthouse. Now those charges are official. It's a story we've been closely following here at WHAS 11. And our top story today, I'm Shay McAllister. And I'm Doug Prophet. As we first reported here yesterday at 5, the court record showed Misty Knoll is charged with alleged theft and tax evasion. Within the hour, a special judge was appointed and the arrest warrant was signed. WHS 11's Travis Breeze and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie are at the Clark County Courthouse right now. And uh, Travis, is Misty Knoll expected to spend much time in jail? Doug, she is at least going to be in jail through the weekend. She is being held without bond until her initial court appearance Monday afternoon. At that time, she will appear alongside her husband, Jamie, as he is a co-defendant with her in these 10 new charges for theft and tax evasion, although those have been added to his case that was already ongoing. Now, Misty did turn herself in, and her and Jamie were both here since 9.45 a.m. because they wanted to show the state investigators that they were complying and that she was willing to turn herself in. We did see her walking down the hallway as she came out of the attorney's conference room and into custody, and we tried to ask her how deeply she is connected to the investigation. Misty, do you have anything to no say comments. about Nothing. what you knew about this Nothing. throughout the last six Nothing. years? Did you benefit from what your husband may have done as much as he did? Misty is being represented by uh, Bart McMahon. He declined to give any comment, but made it clear that they are complying with the investigation. Sheriff's deputies were guarding her very tightly as she walked down the hallway. Misty's probable cause affidavit has just been made public, so we will learn more about exactly how she's connected to the case very soon. As I mentioned, Misty Knoll will be held without bond throughout the weekend. State police said they were taking her to the Scott County Jail. That is the same place where Jamie was booked into custody as to avoid any appearance of bias in Clark County. In Jeffersonville, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11, on your side. Every one of us is working hard to make Louisville a safer, a stronger, and a healthier city a city that's growing and moving in a new direction towards a brighter future. The state of the city given today. The mayor delivering his message today about your safety, crime, and the future surrounded by police. Greg Greenberg says the city is seeing results now under his leadership. In his second state of the city address, the mayor showing support for LMPD. In his words, embracing the challenges right alongside officers. Senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton covered that speech today. And Isaiah, the location was notable. Well, Shay, very much so. The mayor spoke at the brand new Summit Wellness Center. That's a dedicated facility for Metro Police officers. It just opened up this past October, and Greenberg wasted no time publi publicly backing LMPD and the changes that have been made. And welcoming to the podium, Mayor Craig Greenberg. Fresh off his first year in office, Louisville Mayor Today, Craig Greenberg stood in front of a landscape photo of the city with words reading, we have your back. The location for a second state of the city address, a center dedicated to police officers' mental and physical health. This was essential for us to change the culture of our police department as well and make clear that my administration will embrace changes and challenges alongside with our police department. Greenberg doubling down on the direction LMPD and the chief he appointed are moving in. And that's our chief, Jacqueline Gwynn Billeroel. Her name met with an extended round of applause. Because she demonstrated and continues to demonstrate that she is the right person for the job. Greenberg emphasized the drop in homicide numbers under his leadership, but also acknowledged violent crime is still too high. And LMPD has had a rough time and is still undergoing a rough time. There are a lot of things that needs to be fixed there, and he wants to support his officers. Completely understand that. 
But what we need to see as a community is him being willing to hold them accountable for the changes that need to happen. Louisville Urban League CEO Lyndon Pryor telling me after the speech they still have their eyes on reform. And we still have a consent decree agreement that's hanging out there that we need to see movement on. And we haven't seen a whole lot or heard a whole lot from his administration about that and what's going to happen. The previous mayor of 12 years, Greg Fisher, left on noticeably rocky terms with LMPD. Way particularly police union leadership. Greenberg appearing to strike a different tone. That's as Republicans in Frankfurt sit with the power to help make some of his big proposals a reality. To improve state incentives to attract more capital investments to our city. And Greenberg, of course, touched on a lot more here in his address that lasted more than 45 minutes. That's including the final version of his plan for affordable housing and to bring universal pre-K right here to Louisville. We're expecting to get more specifics on those proposals here in the next few weeks. Shay. All right, Isaiah, thank you very much. We do want to let you know on a sad note today, Mayor Greenberg announced the passing of his mother, Ruth. He posted on social media that he got the news right as he left the State of the City address. In a statement, the mayor said she was an incredible mother, grandmother, and wife who will be greatly missed. Ruth Greenberg was 78 years old. Our condolences to the mayor and his family. Developing story today, an Indiana lawmaker apparently showed a gun in a holster to students advocating for gun control at the state's capital in Indianapolis. The video showing the event was recorded by a high school student. And here it is. You can see the video here. Representative Jim Lucas, who represents Seymour, Indiana, was discussing how people have to protect themselves and said, I'm carrying now. And that's when he opened his suit jacket to show he has a holstered gun. The five students were at the Capitol in Indianapolis as part of a day of advocacy for students demanding action, a group fighting for gun control. After the event, Representative Lucas later posted on Facebook saying he had a very respectful discussion with the students and to always assume you are being recorded. Indiana lawmakers and their staff are allowed to carry handguns into the Capitol and on complex grounds in Indianapolis. A bill introduced this year would extend that right to some statewide elected officials and their staff members. And state police are investigating a deadly crash in Bullitt County. It happened around 8 last night on South Bardstown Road, just south of Mount Washington. Police aren't sure why the SUV driver, 47-year-old Jason Durbin, crossed the center line, hitting another car head-on and causing a pickup truck to hit that car. The car's driver was 26-year-old Gary Bowman, and he died at the scene. Durbin is now being treated at University Hospital for life-threatening injuries. The driver and passenger in the pickup truck were not injured. We had a really cold start this morning. There was frost all over the cars, and then lo and behold, the nice uh, sun came out, and you could feel the warm-up by this afternoon. I'm so looking to a real gorgeous sunset tonight, Colleen. It is going to be a very pretty one. We are still seeing some crystal blue skies. I am so happy after 10 straight days of clouds, we finally got treated to a really beautiful sunrise. Check out this time lapse over downtown. Captured it. Not a single cloud in sight, which allowed us to cool off in the morning and then do the exact opposite in the afternoon. Our high temperature today was 59 degrees. In fact, we're still sitting there. If we happen to get to 60 here, it would really need to happen within the next 20 minutes because once that sun sets, we are going to start cooling off yet again. So sunset is about 30, 45 minutes away. Right now we're hovering at 59 degrees at the All International, 57 in Bowman across town. It does not feel like February weather, so enjoy it while you can. Throughout the next few hours, temperatures will slow Slowly be cooling off back into the upper 40s, 49 at 8 p.m. And then you'll start to notice a few more clouds starting to build out there. We are staying dry before you look at this cold front. It is not going to bring any rain, maybe an isolated sprinkle tomorrow morning, but it looks like we have some clouds that are going to build overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. So after that front passes through, we're not going to be in the upper 50s. It's going to knock us down to low to mid 50s here throughout the weekend, but you can see more blue skies in that forecast for this Saturday. I will tell you how long the sunny weather will last here coming up. Doug Shea. Thank you very much, Colleen. Tonight, residents in Nelson County will come together for a candlelight vigil to honor those lost in tragedies over the past week. That includes a 13 year old boy who was found dead in his bedroom. That death investigation is still ongoing, but no foul play isn't expected. Also, 16 year old Lily Smith 
She died in a single car crash on Sunday. Her parents shared they are so proud of her. The teen made the decision to be an organ donor and saved four people's lives. The people behind tonight's community vigil all say that Nelson County will come together and grieve. Unfortunately, Nelson County is not new to tragedy. But the good thing about Nelson County is when something tragic does happen, our community like comes together like something that you don't see in many places. Nation for tonight's vigil, it'll begin at 645 at the Nelson County Justice Center. Those attending should gather out front near the flagpole. Candles will be provided. The WHAS 1119 team is there. We are talking to those at the vigil tonight. Our story is at 11 right here tonight.